Hello friends, today I'm going to go meet with somebody that some of you might know. We are going to be talking all things Alaska mom life, expenses, what it's like being a mom here, raising kids in Alaska. Any guesses who it might be? You'll find out in just a minute. Let's get going. But first, let's say goodbye to Miss Luna. I moved her cat bed here into my office and she pretty much sleeps here every day now while I do my working. She's either there or pretty much right on top of my keyboard. Here, or keyboard. Okay, we'll see you a little bit later, Miss Luna, okay? <laughs> goodbye. In case you missed it yesterday, we did get snow. We had our first snow of the season. It was about three or four hours of snow. We got about an inch on the ground and it hasn't snowed since, but it sure has gotten colder. It was a good first like round to get us ready for winter. There's a new list of things that we need to do now that winter is setting in, like changing tires, getting out all the snow clothes. So this first snow is helping our brains click from fall to winter here in Alaska. So as you can see, the roads are still really, really clear, which makes it good for driving. We only had one night of freezing weather before the snow came. So the ground hadn't frozen yet, so it didn't really stick to anything like pavement or rocks and things like that. It only stuck in the grass. Today we are sitting right at around 30 degrees or negative one degrees Celsius. It's chilly. So the person we're going to meet, I have never met before in real life. We are just internet friends, YouTube friends, Instagram friends, but today we are going to meet in real life and I'm really excited because this YouTuber world is very strange sometimes. It can sometimes also feel isolating because most people don't want to talk YouTube with you. They don't want to talk about the behind the scenes or ideas or what's working, what's not working, your fears, your failures. People just don't want to talk to you about those kind of things very often. And so it's nice to meet people in real life that are also doing YouTube. But hopefully I can rein myself in because sometimes when I get started talking YouTube to somebody that's interested, I have a hard time stopping. So we're meeting at the Moose's Tooth, which is the best place hands down in Anchorage for pizza. Their pizzas are just unique and good. So we're gonna meet there for lunch. We're just gonna get to know each other and then we're gonna do an interview for you guys and talk about mom life here in Alaska. All right, are you ready to see who I'm with? Hello! Yay. Hello! Visiting from Fairbanks! Yay! <laughs> If you're not familiar, this is Jessica Violet from Violet Vlogs. They live in Fairbanks or North Pole, but they are down visiting and we had to get together. So we are having some lunch together. We ate delicious food and had the best time chatting and just talking YouTube and life. I got a huge pizza to take home to the boys, but we were talking so much, I didn't even get a picture of it. But we had a great time and the food was amazing and the company was amazing. Then it was time to go somewhere we could film and answer some questions for all of you. All right, friends, I am here with Jessica Violet from Violet Vlogs. She lives in North Pole, Alaska, which is, how many miles away is North Pole? It's about 360. 360 miles north of where we live here in Anchorage. So we are both moms to four kids. We have a lot of things in common, but we also have a lot of things that are different. One, because they live up north and we live down here where there is, a bit more to do down here. Oh, absolutely. With like shopping and things yep. like that. Yep. So she was just saying that there were they had a list of places they wanted to go while they were here, like Target and Olive Garden. They wanted to make sure they hit up those places. Absolutely. <laughs> are you a hunting and fishing family? We are not. I wish we were because I, I thoroughly enjoy seeing that type of stuff done because it's such a huge part of Alaska. Um, Lance was never taken hunting. My husband was never taken hunting when he was younger. So. It was just um, something we haven't done, but totally respect the, the work on that because that's a lot of work. <laughs> I think sometimes people assume if you live in Alaska, you hunt and you fish, but that's not the case. A lot of people live here and they don't do any of that and that is fine too. So it's just kind of fun to see both of our perspectives. We have a lot of things in common, but we do have things that are different. So I have some questions that I thought we would kind of go through and talk about 
our different perspectives as moms in Alaska. Okay, first thing, what do you, what is one of your favorite things about living in Alaska? The people, absolutely the people. Um, I think a lot of people see this when they come here is the willingness to help when a car gets broke down. Um, when you walk into a store and somebody smiles at you. Um, that was something I went to like the lower 48 and I saw, you know, I saw, I, I'm a, I'm a pretty bubbly person and so like I walk into a store and I'll smile at somebody and people are just so to themselves in bigger cities and something in Alaska even here in Anchorage where it's much bigger than where I live you walk into a store and you can say hi and people are friendly they're kind um, where we get it's 40 below quite often and so cars break down they freeze um, because it's about a hundred below is what's hitting your car when you're going 60 miles an hour um, with the, with the windshield worked into that uh, so it's uh people break down quite often and there will be multiple cars that stop you know people are not afraid to come help at those temperatures nobody's messing around they're not going to just be sitting on the side of the road they are broken down they need help so yeah that's that's the people. That was really long. I'm so sorry. No, that's, <laughs> long we did. that's great. I think for me, you know, I think the people for me some like just it's so beautiful and it's so vast. Like every community has something different to offer. Um, you think you know Alaska by just living in one place, and you don't. Like there's just so many different facets to Alaska because of its size and. The geography changes so much that I feel like we could explore every day of the year somewhere new and we still wouldn't see half of it. So yep. I love just that there's just so much to offer if you're willing to go out and see it. So yep. you can live however you want to live. If you want to live off grid, if you want to live in a dry cabin, if you want to live in a bigger city where there's you know stuff to do, there's Anchorage. Um, if you want to live in a slower, slower city, there's Fairbanks. There's you just wanna, yeah. so many options. Yeah. You want to live on the water and be in boats all the time, or if you want to be inland and you just could just want to be in the mountains, there it, there really is just something for everyone. And most people are nice everywhere you go, but they do kind of get a little pride in where they are. Like, oh, Fairbanks is the best. I could never yep. imagine living in Anchorage, or yep. Ketchikan is the best. I could never imagine living in a big city like Fairbanks. You know, so yeah. there's yep. definitely a lot of different things to experience and ways to live yeah and the people here are so just non-judgmental if you live this way if you live in a dry cabin then that's okay it's not weird it's yeah. not uncommon if you I don't know I guess some people Anchorage gets hated on I think the most for being like city in Alaska but I enjoy it the beauty here with the mountains every time I literally just got goosebumps <laughs> I love the mountains here they're just beautiful so and I think they kind of dog on it, but they would, it's nice to have at least one city that has Absolutely. some of the amenities because right. otherwise when I was growing up in Anchorage, we didn't have most of these stores and it was very common for people to fly to Seattle to do like their back to school shopping. Yeah. Yep. Which now I can't imagine. Thankfully we have online shopping now, so that's not, we don't have to do that, <laughs> yeah. but that just blows my mind. Okay. So that's a great thing is about living in Alaska. What is something that kind of makes it hard to live here the darkness the darkness is definitely and and i this is something i learned just in the last like year i didn't realize you guys have two hours more daylight than we do in fairbanks and i mean common sense because we're like in the middle of the state versus the lower but um we get about four hours of barely daylight and um and even just at six hours of daylight is hard no matter where you're at in alaska you're gonna have a dark season and it's hard. It's just hard. There's not a lot. I mean, there's things you can do to kind of battle that, but it's it's all over hard. It's definitely something that you have to like prepare for and make sure that you have things in place so that it doesn't get you down. Yep. Um, I think people don't understand even like, it's not just darkness. Like in our yard, we don't get the sunshine for several months because the sun doesn't get high enough and we have a hill in our yard. So it's not even just that it's dark. It's like, we don't get any direct sunlight from, I think it's October through February or March. So 
our neighbors get sunshine, but we don't get any direct sunlight in our house. So there's just different facets of it. It's not just that some kid, some people go to work in the dark and come home in the dark. It's yeah. very most, common most in that people. in that middle of the winter. Even yeah. the kids, they go to the bus stop in the dark and they maybe have half an hour when they get home from school to have daylight hours. Um, it does creep up on you. Thankfully, it happens five minutes at a time. It's not right. like one day. Yeah. Um, but it can, if you're not careful, it can really get to you. Yeah. I think people visiting really have a hard time because they go from normal light to just dark so much. Um, where, as she was saying, like we gradually lose light. Mm -hmm. So we slowly, it, it just all of a sudden happens and you're like, wow, it's, it's five o'clock and it's dark outside. I didn't realize that, you know? Um, and we have such the opposite because like we don't use our headlights at all during the summertime unless you right. just have them on to be safe but you don't need them and then like you're like wow it is really dark and there's lots of places in Alaska that don't even have street lights like our neighborhood has no street lights so it is yeah. really really dark it's not Same. just kind of dark with some street no it's like pitch black, pitch black everywhere yeah <laughs> so you have to be careful what are some things that you do to kind of combat that staying busy um, just making sure you're not, it's so easy when you, when it's dark to kind of hibernate in a sense and you really don't want to go out and it's 20 below and so it's just cold out and you have to dress for the weather. There's, it, it takes a lot to get out of the house and then, um, so it's really easy to kind of coop up yourself and that's going to make things even worse, you know, when you're cooped up, um, staying busy, just making sure you're getting out and um, some people tan. I know that's really bad for your skin. I don't, um, but a lot of people do go do in the tanning beds. Do people still do that? I guess. They do. When I moved here when I was 14, that was a huge thing. Like, because mm -hmm. I moved from Texas, I never would have tanned in Texas because we just go outside. But uh, we got into it. My sister and I and my brother would go and tan. We don't do it anymore, but just that light. People just need the light. So yeah. you buy a happy light. You plan a trip somewhere warm if at all possible that's huge Alaskans love Hawaii did you know that it's a five-hour flight or maybe a little bit more if you have to fly like Fairbanks to Anchorage but you can be in Hawaii in a non-stop five-hour flight it's amazing it's magical it's or amazing. go to Arizona lots of Alaskans go to Arizona or Texas or California because or Florida because you just need a little break to like make yep. it through yep you need somewhere warm you need Sun you need all of that and it kind of gives you a goal to set you mm -hmm. know you you're going through this like hard time and it's dark and you're just you just don't you don't feel great um, and it kind of gives you like okay I just got to get to that point and it really really truly does help our family cross-country skis um, a lot of people own snow machines to go out we don't but or snowmobiles you know, just... if you're from the lower 48 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna cut you off there. No, it's true. But there's even Alaskans that don't call them snow machines. They're like, it's called a snow go or it's called a yeah. sled. And I'm like, there's so many names. Ski do. Some people yeah. just call all snow machines ski do's. But, but Anchorage okay. people do call them snow machines and they do, they look at you crazy if you call it a snowmobile. So just know if you're ever talking to an Alaskan about a <laughs> snow machine, don't say snowmobile. <laughs> But I could really care less what you call it. I, yeah. know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep, either one. But I think a lot of people, when you call it a snow machine, they picture a snowblower. Yep. They think you're talking about like something to clean your driveway. Or not... a machine that makes snow. Like the, like the ski, uh, yeah, the yeah, ski, the ski resort. Yep, yep. Nope, That's we're talking okay. about a snowmobile. Yep, you ride on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What are some expenses people might not realize we have living in Alaska? Um, oh man, this one's hard. Talk about the heating oil. Okay. I think that's something that people don't realize. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll let Lauren talk about what, what she has, but heating oil is definitely a huge, huge expense. It's going to cost, um, well, maybe I should save that for our secret video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll give you numbers later, but... Okay. Just talk about like what what it takes to heat your home. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a lot of places in Fairbanks and North Pole have fireplaces or stoves or, or whatever you want to call them, pellet stoves. Um, but if you don't, it's just pure heating fuel. Um, we don't have any type of natural gas or anything to help supplement that. And so um, it's a large chunk. You would be very surprised 
on how expensive that is. So what she's talking about getting heating fuel, like a truck comes to her house and like fills it up like as you would fill up your car, but yeah. for their house and you have to get it refilled when it runs out, which that's not something that I realized until watching your videos because here in Anchorage we have natural gas so it just comes straight to our house. Um, we have electric and you do they have electric too they don't but they don't have the natural gas so they have to get the fee, the heating fuel and it's much more expensive than the natural gas that we pay for down here yeah. so that's an extra expense for them up there uh one thing that i don't think people realize just the like having to have different sets of tires for your car some people have all-weather tires but often you need studded tires or a different set of tires for the summer and the winter and you have to pay to get them changed over if you can't do it yourself so there's just that's an extra expense that you gotta budget in if you want to be in alaska yep um the other thing we were just talking about before we started this video was how expensive it is to recreate in Alaska. Even if you're just going camping, they have a camper. We camp in my parents' motor home um, between gas costs, between, between the cost of gas and just all the supplies. It's not it's not cheap and it's not free. <laughs> mm -hmm. Food is a huge one when you're camping that you're buying way more convenient food than you normally would. I mean, there is, you do buy the chicken and stuff, but you're making fun meals. You know, it, camping really is about memories. And so you're buying the fun things. You're buying the s'more stuff and you're buying, um, I don't know, just, just more fun things. And so the cost is definitely much higher than I anticipated this summer to be, but. And you just, the convenience like you said those yep. foods kind of cost Possibly. more and then we both have four kids we have to, the seasons are so drastic here in Alaska you need entirely different wardrobes for summer and winter and then that fall and spring kind of have their own wardrobes too because you're in between the winter coat is way too warm for spring mm -hmm. and then you need the rain gear so do you find that that's a big expense is just keeping your kids in the right Gear. clothing absolutely because we can't I, I, how cold does it get here like what's a normal cold temperature like 20. okay and we sometimes get negatives for a couple days but nothing like you guys get yeah what is there a cutoff for like recess when the kids can go outside um what is it it's it's pretty cold but yeah. it's what is your cutoff uh, our cutoff is 20 below Gosh. So I think ours is 10, but we don't get below? there very often. Yeah, I think yeah. it's 10 below. So 20 below is very common in Fairbanks, and your kids have to go outside. Um, as uh, Down until 20 below, they're going outside. So you can't just buy cheap winter gear. It can't just be these, you know, $10 snow pants or $20 snow pants. They have to be good quality. Um, not only do they have to wear them at those temperatures so they have to be warm, they have, they have to be able to hold up. Yeah. I went through so many snow pants the first year the kids were in school because they're playing and I want them to play. Yeah. You want them to use they're these. They're them. Yep. Um, especially the boys, man. They're, those <laughs> knees. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, the expense to buy those like good quality snow gear is quite large yeah. for each child. And then they grow out of it and you're like, oh. no, you needed th that needed to <laughs> yeah. last a whole season. Heaven they forbid like, they grow. <laughs> yeah, they change. I end up buying a lot of jackets just for like the everyday wear, like at Costco, because yeah. Yep. then it makes it more affordable but they don't last as long so it's tricky it's very tricky people ask me sometimes for good recommendations of snow gear you kind of just have to go to the stores and buy it now i will not shop rei for snow gear because i cannot pay the three four hundred dollars for a snowsuit no nope. um because kids are kids and they're, oh, they're gonna rip things and they're gonna tear and you're gonna be like oh my gosh <laughs> yep but you know you for me, the key for my kids is just layering them. So having a base layer and then having a fleece and then having their snowsuit. And then they rip all that off and are running around anyways. And I don't like, I'm sitting there like freezing and they're just like pretty much in their underwear sledding. So I don't know, you can't win. You can't. <laughs> Alaska kids are resilient. They are. I don't know about yours, but oh, mine, yeah. I'm just like, then we go to somewhere like Arizona and it's, the middle of the winter so it's only like 70 degrees and they're like we're dying they cannot handle the heat but they love the cold it'll be like 55 degrees and everyone's like oh we're so cold they're in winter coats in the lower yep. 48 and then your kids are just like shorts sandals yep. 
comfortable. You stand out yep. no matter where you are. <laughs> All right. Um, As you can see between questions, we got along really well. Let's answer a few more for you. So what shopping options do you have up in Fairbanks? Um, we do have a Costco. We're thankful for that because we did have a Sam's and then they just one day decided it was not cost effective for them to be there and that was terrible on our community. Um, and if you follow my channel, I didn't ever do a Sam's Club haul because I started this channel after they left, but Sam's Club was my happy place. So I was oh. devastated when it closed here. Oh, did you, were you okay with the switch to Costco or was the switch hard for you? It was hard. Yeah. Costco is so busy. It and is. Sam's Club was not so busy. I'm sure it wasn't Fairbanks because that was all you had. Right. But it was like, and I'm like, well, that's why they closed because they weren't busy. <laughs> but I, that's why I liked it. And they had better sales. Like they would have clearance that I would just, I would take my kids and just, when I had two little babies, and I would just wander Sam's Club once a week and we'd get a piece of pizza. And it was just like all the workers knew us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is pre-YouTube. But I just like... Now all the workers know us here. Not all, like three, but <laughs> <laughs> we've made some. We've made some friends. Yeah. At, at Costco now. So you have Costco, and then we've got Costco. We have two Fred Meyers, um, two Safeways in Fairbanks, and then one in North Pole. Um, and there's like some health food stores, like the smaller ones. No, they're all local. Um, but other than that, I think. Oh, we do have a Walmart. Oh, we do have a Walmart. I don't enjoy Walmart. That's not my jam. If you follow, if you watch me, you know that. <laughs> I go I, in there. But. I go to Walmart for toilet paper because our the guy that did our septic said that their toilet paper is the best and that Costco's is not good for septic. So I was like, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. You have to do a swirl test. You have to swirl it. If it breaks up, then it. Did you do good a video about this? I didn't. Oh but. well. Well, I think I'm, I'm not sure that's a great I, swirl your toilet paper. I mentioned it because one time I bought like eight of them because between our house and the Airbnb I feel like we go through tons of toilet paper yeah but if I go shopping at Walmart it's gonna be like the most random cart of things nothing is gonna go together Always. whereas like Costco I have I ideas in mind Fred Meyer I'm like buying for a specific recipe Walmart is like the crap basket everything is just yeah because they have it's so just much random and just junk what do you have to do up there for like furniture and things um oh that's hard we have saddlers which is very expensive but it's good quality stuff um and then we have baileys okay so we have um, both of those in anchorage but yeah. if that's all you have we have some smaller stores um i just yeah buying furniture is is very tricky in Alaska. It is. And I have a lot of people comment and say, oh, just order it on Amazon. But you get this red warning, like this does not ship to Alaska when you try and put big things in your cart. Yep. I've even had things that went through and then I get an email later saying, oh, sorry, we realized we made a mistake. We cannot ship this to Alaska. So yep. just, I know people are um, being kind when they tell us, oh, just go order it, but it doesn't. It's not that simple in Alaska. And even if it says free shipping, they're not gonna ship it to you free very often. Every once in a while you can get free shipping, but there's a little asterisk down at the bottom that says only to the contiguous United States. That means the lower 48, what we call the lower 48, the 48 states, not including Hawaii and Alaska, because yep. apparently we are like a foreign country. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what a lot of people think. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that people even ask, like, what currency do you take here? Yeah. We are part of the United States. Yeah, yeah. American money. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had an Ikea, or at least you guys had an Ikea. I feel like more people in Fairbanks would, like, be driving here. That would be a big game changer to have an Ikea. Yeah. Bailey's but. is, they try and be kind of like an Ikea and be a little bit more like, lower prices, less sales, but the options are just so limited. That's the thing, like you have to get really creative if you want something that's not just off the Costco floor. Yep. <laughs> Costco really is a good place to find. Oh, right I'm... now they have a ton of furniture and, or maybe they're getting rid of it for like Christmas time, but they really do have, they have full sets in there. And I'm so grateful for Costco because I feel like they're, they thankfully have good quality because that's, right. Not always the case when you're trying to buy something that's affordable. Yep. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what we like to feed our family. She's got two boys and two girls. 
uh, not a hunting family, I have four boys and the only protein we really eat is the occasional Costco chicken and then we have moose, caribou, bear, and yes we eat bear, but only if it's a spring bear and it hasn't eaten any stinky rotten fish. It's actually one of my favorite meats. Um, and then the halibut and salmon. So what are some things you like to feed your family? Um, oh man, we're a pretty basic American family, honestly. Um, we do, you know, the tacos, the spaghetti. We, we basically have probably 10 meals that we commonly make. And just like rotate through. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're really, I, I keep things pretty simple. My family is not picky, but just out of not having to think about meals, it's like, let's stick with these, these normal ones. Um, I am slightly jealous about all the meat you just mentioned because meat is very expensive. When I do find yes. meat on sale, especially ground beef and chicken thighs, those are like our two main meats that we do eat. Uh, if I find it on sale, I buy it like 10, 15 pounds at a time and vacuum seal it flat in my freezer. I vacuum seal it and then put them flat and they just kind of all stack nicely and that's kind of the the bulk of what we do is ground beef and chicken thighs. Yeah, I get sticker shock when I look at any meat prices. It like makes me kind of anxious just because I don't buy that. I bought that kind of stuff before I got married. I didn't ever eat any sort of um, game meat before I met my husband Mark so it was all new for me but his dad kind of told me really early in marriage if you can make it with chicken you can make it with halibut and if you can make it with beef you can make it with moose and I was like okay I'm gonna learn how to do this um, but then every once in a while for my Costco videos I'll show the prices like I showed the price of halibut the other day and it was like $24 a pound and I'm like um I pretty much have gold in my freezer <laughs> yeah and I had a friend visit this week from Arizona and I said hey do you want salmon or do you want halibut she's like halibut halibut please <laughs> and I was like okay we can do that for you because I just I forget how expensive all that stuff is. I can't even imagine what my grocery bill would be because we eat at home 99% of the time. And so having that freezer or freezers full of meat is a real blessing, but I could do it without it. Like we would survive without it. And I would just probably, I would make everything. I, the same things I make, it would just be with beef, you know, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. We share the value of just gathering around the table is an important yep. thing for our families and we see the value in that so um, when i'm watching her on instagram and she shares her dinners and things like that i'm like yeah it's good to see other families gathering around the table and sharing those experiences because it's really important that's yeah. one of our family values so yep and it's such a lost art in a way is just seeing families together just to be able to like connect even if you guys are crazy all day long and then you sit down for a meal and have conversation or talk about the good, the bad, all of that, um, I love that. And, and really, like she said, simple meals yep. are perfect. You don't need anything fancy. And so I like to try fancy every once in a while, but it always just like, then nobody wants to eat it. Exactly. <laughs> So you're like, you made this meal and you're thing, excited I for. did that, and then you and your husband are like, this is good, and nobody else, they're all like pouring themselves cereal in the background, because they're like, I don't like that. So. It wasn't good, yeah. yeah. I It really hurts my heart when I make a meal, and everyone's like, oh, that was not good. Even if they're gentle about it, I'm like, I just spent all this time making it. Yeah. So it's good to, most of the time, stick to the basics. Yep. The spaghetti, the tacos, and then every once in a while I'll go out. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I some of our viewers send us recipes, and those have been really fun to try yes. from their different countries, because yep. then we're like, oh, this is something that they eat regularly that we probably wouldn't try. Yep. Um, and then it's fun for us because we were like, this is now moose saka instead of whatever masaka or I don't you know we can make it with our moose and things and people think that's fun but um, yeah it is good to try recipes that we didn't but it's also good just to give your mom brain a break and yep. just make the regular stuff the meals you don't even have to think about you know it's like muscle memory you just you just make them yeah. those are the easy ones well Jessica and I were internet friends and I knew we would get along but I hope that you guys enjoyed getting to sit down and talk with us for a little while because 
she really is awesome. Oh, so. so are you. It's so nice to meet other another mom that is, you know, doing the same thing and understands the ins and outs of YouTube and it's just it's just good for the mom's soul. <laughs> We're gonna finish chatting, just the two of us, but if you have any other questions for us that we could answer in another video, maybe separately, and we'll send you to each other's channels, you can put those in the comments below. Mm -hmm. And make sure you go check out Violet Vlogs. Violet is their last name, so that's why it's Violet Vlogs, or... Yeah. Okay, I don't know what I was gonna say there. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> so thanks for chatting with us. <laughs> Man, that was so much fun getting to chat with Violet Vlogs. It just really warms my heart. Any chance that I get to connect with internet friends in real life, and you just love it when they're even cooler and just as genuine in real life than they are on the internet. So thank you, Jessica and Natalie, for taking your afternoon to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. And since I'm here in Anchorage, they headed off to Dave & Buster's uh, to go to the arcade, which love Dave and Buster's with the boys. We touched a little bit on how hard it is to get furniture in Alaska, but I happen to be driving by one of my favorite unique stores here in Anchorage. I really can't afford anything in this store because to, if you want something unique in Alaska, you usually have to pay a premium price, but I do just love walking through the store so that I can feel the ambiance of it and then it makes me excited to go home and find more budget friendly ways to recreate the things that are in this store. I have bought a few things from clearance here before or smaller knickknacks and decor things. Today I'm not really shopping but I do want to take you to look around. This store is called Ozarks, a blend of old and new. They have antiques, they have reproduction pieces, they have cool one-of-a-kind shopping items. Let's go check it out. By the looks of it, they have it set up for Christmas, so we're all gonna get in the Christmas spirit when we're in there, which feels appropriate since there's some snowflakes coming down.
I just love that store. But I'm sure you can see by the prices in those store, it would be really hard to furnish a house at those prices. So I love going in there to get inspired. And then I try and recreate that with garage sale finds or Target. Yep, I try and recreate it with Target stuff because <laughs> that's more my budget. So beautiful shop. I love coming in here once a season to wander around and that was fun to feel in the fall spirit and also transitioning into Christmas because they're getting ready for their Christmas open house. I got to start heading home. It's almost time for the boys to get home from school. Well friends, I'm back home. That was so much fun today. It is just great to connect with other people who understand things that you're doing. You know, we want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. I have this amazing community on YouTube. But if I get the chance to meet people in real life, face to face, it just is good for the soul. Make sure you go and check out Violet Vlogs. I'll put the link to their channel down below. And hopefully we will be collaborating on more videos in the future. We kind of have some ideas of things we want to share with you about the differences between the places that we live here in Alaska because there are some major differences. So keep an eye out for future collaboration videos. Thank you so much for watching. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. We love you and we'll see you again real soon for more of This Alaska Life. And goodbye to Miss Luna who has been napping next to the heater. Sorry, it's bad lighting, but she's been napping next to the warm heater there under my desk. You had a good sleep next to the warm heater.